this is Greg with Walnut Ridge and today we're going to look at the Puma 32 RKTS. Um, we're going to do an orientation on this unit so we're going to start up here in the front with the uh, LCI power jack. Uh, it's a pretty simple operation it's got an on and off switch for the light and then simple extend and retract uh, to get it on and off your vehicle and also to level the unit. Um, it's got a crank if you pop this rubber grommet off the top there's a crank inside your storage or it's a simple three quarter inch uh, socket you can use too and you can manually uh, get that up and down if you had to uh, for any reason behind that you have two seven gallon lp tanks or 30 pound tanks as they'll call them um, both of these will be full at the time of pickup with us um, so what you want to do with these tanks is they have a your regulator in the front and it's i uh, got a auto switch auto switch over feature on them so basically what it'll do is while you're camping, if you want to, you can leave both of your tanks on. And whichever way you have this arrow pointing at that tank, it'll draw off that tank first. Once that tank's empty, this will go red like it is right now because the tank's empty. Um, and it'll automatically start pulling from the other tank. Um, so you'll see that that's red. You'll know it's pulling from this tank. And then you can flip it over. And so when this one goes empty, it'll go red and you'll know. Um, but it will automatically pull on its own that way if you're traveling and you have your fridge on gas um, it will it, the fridge won't shut off uh, another thing you can do is leave one tank off and just run one at a time put the arrow on whatever tank you have open and then whenever stuff stops working um, your stove and stuff you'll still know you have one full tank left you could take this tank off go get it filled and then you still have one tank at all times so two different ways you can run those we have the LP cover we'll go ahead and put back on the flap. You'll want to always make sure the flap is facing towards the unit and you tighten down the nuts just in case. This is an access so you can get inside without taking the panel off. Um, keep it facing that way so the wind doesn't blow it up and rip it off. Behind that you'll have a 12 volt deep cycle uh, marine battery on the coach. That'll supply your lights, your uh, water pump, awning, slides and things like that. Uh, so if you are dry camping or if it can't be plugged in, um, you will be able to run those things at least um, or while you're traveling if you stop at a, a grocery store or something you can open your slide one thing you'll want to remember is anytime you're plugged into the vehicle it will be charging the battery or anytime you're plugged into the 30 amp coach in the back it will charge the battery um, when you're not in use it's best to go ahead and take the negative off the battery that way um, the little things on the inside that are hardwired like your radio and the um, backlights on different things won't drain your battery uh, yeah. moving around to this side we have a big storage here um, on the inside and then we have another one here that goes underneath the slide which I don't have the key for uh, underneath the boost in there back here we have your dump station this one's got two back here and then one in the uh, very back and up here you have your black handle and gray handle um, black is your toilet um, and gray is going to be your bathroom sink and shower so what you want to do when you dump is go ahead and unscrew the cap put your uh, sewer hose on here and put it into the dump site pull your black tank handle first Oop. wait till it's done close it and then pull your gray so whenever um, what that'll help do is that prevents backwashing from black water up into the gray tank and that keeps that as sanitary as it can be um, it also helps flush out your hose with a little bit extra with cleaner water than what would be in your black tank one other big important thing you want to remember before you start camping before you start using this once you get to your site always make sure that your gate valves are shut because these caps that are on here seal really well um, so if this is open you see there was water in there and it's not leaking out so imagine what's in your black tank if this valves open when you go to take this cap off all that's going to come back out of you. So always make sure your valves are shut before you start to use it. Um, your slide outs. One thing I recommend is always use a uh, rubber seal conditioner every two to three months, um, or even every month if you can, depending on how long they're out in the sun. You want to spray that on there. It's a nice foam spray that'll keep help help keep these pliable, um, and so they um, so they still uh, protect and they won't let water in. Along with the black tank down here, another thing you can do while you're at the dump site is this is a sewer flush on top and it's um, indicated by the black tank flush sticker there. So after you're done dumping the black tank, go ahead and leave the valve open, hook up a hose in here, turn it on, it's going to shoot water inside that tank and help clean it out. 
a uh, really nice feature. Those are very helpful to keep the tank clean, help keep the tank probes clean so the monitor panel reads correctly. Below that, you have your city water connection. And this would be if you're going to a full hookup site. Um, you can just hook up your hose into here. You want to run a um, pressure regulator off the faucet that they have. From there, go into the here, turn it on, and you have unlimited water supply just like you would at home. This model has a uh, nice outside shower on it too. It's just uh, basic hot and cold. Um, great for pets. Back on this side, we have another um, tank. This is for the galley. So this is for the kitchen sink only. So another same instance, you want to keep it shut when you're camping and just uh, hook up your hose um, when you're ready to dump, pull the handle. Same thing there. Sewer hose can also store in the bumper on these. So just pull off the cap, slide it in there. That way you ain't got to keep it up with your storage with all your other personal belongings. Two cable um, hookups on the back. So what this will do is so if you go to a park that has cable hookup, you can hook into the left side for cable, or if you have a satellite dish, if you have a uh, Playmaker or one of the other satellite dishes out there, you can hook into here. It'll automatically feed to your TV on the inside um, with your box, and you can watch satellite TV that way. This coach is equipped with a 50 amp detachable power cord. Um, just unscrews from the from the coach. Comes out, screws in. You want to tighten your lock ring down. Always make sure you detach it before you take off. Um, but this is a 50 amp coach. It's got a ladder on the back so you can get up on the uh, roof. It's always um, one big thing you want to do is check your slides before you run them in to make sure there's no leaves or walnuts or anything out there that could damage that rubber seal or the rubber itself. Um, the unit is equipped with electric stabilizing jacks. So like I said before with the front jack, to level this unit, you want to use your front jack to, for back, front to back leveling. And then if it's side to side leveling is what needs to be done, and you'll need to be driving up on blocks, links levelers, or something similar um, to get your side to side level. You just carry a little foot level around with you, check on the bumper, on the countertop, front um, A-frame, and just until you get completely level. Once you do, then you can go ahead and just hold the extend button until these jacks come down, and you just want them to snug up. To the ground you don't um you don't want to try to raise the camper with these they're not made for that um and it always helps to put a block underneath those so they don't sink do you have the furnace exhaust um not much about this just going to blow out hot air but you do want to keep uh, mud dauber screens covered on this at all times so when you first pick up your coach um, i would recommend always getting mud dauber screens um, they'll they go on real easy they has got a little spring and a tool that comes with them Mud daubers are attracted to gas, so they build nests back in there, and they can end up breaking the squirrel cage or causing the furnace not to work. Um, very important to have. Next is the freshwater tank. So if you're going somewhere that, that doesn't have full hookup, you could hook up this, um, fill up this with water before you leave or when you first get there, and um, run the water pump from the inside, and that's going to give you the same options as the city water connection, just a limited supply. Um, typically you're looking about 45 to 50 gallons on a model like this, maybe a little more. Um, below, back here in the back you have the drain for that, so before you fill it you'll have a drain. Um, just turns, got a valve on it, just open and close, so close it before you fill it. Open it when you're done so that water doesn't get stagnant and old. From there we have your water heater. Um, this model has a gas and electric water heater. Um, it's a Suburban 6 gallon. So, right now it's got the anode rod installed, which is also the drain plug. Um, you will, when we get on the inside, I'll show you where the valve is located on this particular model. Um, so what you want to do is, when you first hook up to your water, either fresh or city, you want to turn on the hose, um, make sure the valve is unbypassed, come out here, put your plug in, and then raise up on that valve and you'll hear that sound if there's water pressure and then it'll also once it starts leaking water pouring water out of here go ahead and shut it and that way you know your water heater is full it pushes all the air out the top you know you have a full water heater from there you can flip on these having a switch on the outside for the gas or for the electric sorry um, flip that on and then this also may have another switch on the inside that both switches will have to be on for the electric to run 
Uh, if you want to run it off 12 volt gas instead, there's a switch on the inside I'll show you. It'll just flip the switch. As long as your LP tank's on, it'll light. And um, it's a little bit quicker recovery for those. Um, you can get heated up about 20 minutes or so. Um, electric takes maybe a little bit longer, maybe about 45 minutes. You can also run them both at the same time if you needed for a faster recovery rate. Um, you got an electric outlet on this side, just a standard 110 outlet. Plug in uh, radios and TVs or anything you want. Um, one thing with these, you want to, main thing I want to, I'll say with axles um, and tires and everything is always check your tires before you leave. Um, we have really good videos on bearing packs and maintenance for the tires um, on our channel and on our Facebook. So if you want to look into those, um, our service manager goes over them in great detail about what you need to watch out for as far as maintenance goes with your axles. Not too much else up here except you do have the other stabilizing jack. Um, this unit's equipped with a electric awning. Um, I'll show you how it runs real quick if you want. On the inside of the coach you'll have a switch just says extend and retract. Really simple operation. It's also got the awning lights, as you can see, it's got a switch on the inside here for those. Um, these have locking arms that you want to, after you get it all the way out, or as far out as you can get it, you want to go ahead and lock these arms into place, um, just to keep it from, uh, keep it more stable. Or you can also can, I can't reach it myself, but if you want to pull this arm in and then tighten it up, that'll drop one side, and then that'll help if it's light rain, It'll let water run off. Um, that way you ain't got to roll up the awning in a light rain. So we'll go ahead and go on inside. Start at this monitor panel right here. So at the top you have um, you have your convenience center. And this will tell you the levels in your tanks underneath. It's got a battery indicator for when you're not plugged in. Um, you have a fresh tank, which is your drinking water tank that I showed you out here on the door side. Black tank's always your toilet. Gray one um, is your bathroom sink and shower. And gray two is the kitchen sink. Now this one also says wash. Um, that they, They've used the same panel for some that have washer and dryer hookups in the back. This particular one doesn't. Um, no, actually it does. So there's a tank underneath there that we missed. Um, so this will have a separate tank for the washer and dryer if you do install one. Um, but if you don't have one, you won't have to worry about that wash button. From there, you have your water pump. If you are using your fresh tank um, instead of your city water connection, if you are hooked into the city water connection on the off-door side, you will not need that. You have your water heater for gas. It's like I said, it's pretty simple. You just want to flip it on. You have a fault light up here that will tell you when it lights. So that light will go off um, once it lights. We don't have LP, so it won't light right now. You have typical, your awning lights, your interior lights, porch light, and then your awning, extend and retract, and then your slides in and out. Simple in and out operation, just hold them until it comes all the way in or out. Let's see, uh, here it's got an IRV radio, this is Bluetooth, um, DVD player, um, it's got auxiliary. <laughs> It's got auxiliary cord, it's got a 5 volt um, phone charger, um, HDMI in too, so fairly simple to use. Um, we have a um, bag of manuals that we have out for every, um, for all, all the equipment inside the unit. You have, the only thing I will say is it has 1 and 2 for speaker control, in here 1 is speakers inside, 2 is speakers outside, um, so you can have vice versa, both of them on or one of them off, whichever you'd like. Um, see down here we have a tool, uh, 110 only fireplace so these are nice if it's um, not very cold in the morning like it gets sometimes uh, this time of year you can turn on this fireplace it's got different settings and buttons up here um, got a high you want to turn that on and then you'll want to there it is multiple different lighting um, you got different backlights, different flame lights. This one's, um, then you have your power button. So 
So that's, um, like I said, 110 only, so it doesn't run off the LP, so you don't have to burn up any gas. And this is plenty enough to heat up the uh, interior room of this coach. Let's see, back here we have um, microwaves, a standard, um, just like any home microwave. They're uh, fairly simple to figure out. You have a fan light over your stove for exhaust. Then your stove's a new Furion stove they're using. Uh, these are really nice. They have a button here to um, some blue LED lights. They're automatic igniters, so you gotta do is just turn it to high once your LP tank's on. Maybe let it bleed out some gas there and just sit there and click it a few times until it lights. Your oven also will light the same way. So all you want to do is turn it to the little flame position, hold the button in, and then turn your sparker and it will spark and ignite just like the old ones did. So once it ignites down there in the very bottom, you want to just go ahead and turn the temperature until you see the whole bar light up in a flame. Oh, fridge. These fridges are new. They run off of 110, of course, but they, they do not run off LP. They only run off 12 volt. So um, with these style of fridges, when you pick up from us, we do wire in two 12 volt batteries um, specifically for these. Um, so it has a switch on the, on the far side over here. And this is very important because this switch has to be on for this fridge to run. So it's not like most of them is just plug and play. Um, we get a few calls about that that maybe it wasn't explained as well as it should have been and that switch does have to be on But it will run off 12 volt. Um, so that's a new feature um, For a full-size fridge down here. You have a carbon monoxide slash LP leak detector um, This is another thing that is wired up directly to the battery So this is something that can drain the battery when you're not plugged in. So it's another reason to disconnect the negative um, But it's pretty simple. You just um, nothing you really want to mess with there just if you if it starts going off, you may have a uh, LP or carbon monoxide leak. Um, you want to shut off your LP and maybe open up some windows and clear out for a little while. But these things have been known to go off with some hairsprays and some cleaning chemicals. Um, it's been a while since I've heard that issue, so I'm sure they've got it taken care of, but just as a precaution. Finally, you have your converter. So this will have all your fuses and all your um, breakers for your 110 and 12 volt side. Uh, your breakers are all labeled down here. So if ever something's not working, like your AC, your microwave, converter itself, um, you can always check the breakers, just like at home. So go ahead and turn those on and off. Um, your fuses all have a, a light underneath. Actually, it's on top of these. See, I pushed it. Took it out a little bit, and the light will light up whenever um, something's not working. So if you ever notice your light or an awning isn't working, this will always be the first place you'll want to check. So always carry some extra 15 amp fuses with you, some seven and a halfs. It looks like they have a couple 20s in there also. Nice thing is it's got a clear screen here, so if you if it uh, you can see the light when you're if you've just noticed it popped up. Uh, back here you have a GFI reset breaker for uh, your outlets, just like most houses have. Uh, so if any outlets near water, six feet within water, like the kitchen or the outside outlets aren't working, this would be the first place you'd want to check. It's got a test and reset button, so you can always check it every once in a while if you want. Um, these new chairs have storage in them. Um, they've been doing that for quite a while, but I always thought that was a nice feature in these. Um, standard up and down shades. You just uh, move up and down on the screen. Uh, what else do we have? I think this one. Uh, let me go to the bathroom real quick um, not too much in here you have a couple lights for your fan and um, uh, lights in here the toilet's a standard foot lever so if you just barely push on it uh, the foot lever once you have water it'll fill itself up and then all the way down flushes it so always fill it up before you use it showers um, pretty self-explanatory but one thing I do want to say if you have this model with these glass panes always make sure that it is latched before you start to travel. That's one big thing you want to put that on your list of your takeoff list before you ever leave. From here you have a Coleman thermostat for your uh, furnace and air conditioner. Work really simple. So 
One thing you want to know when you're using your air conditioning, so if I want to use AC right now, which I do, I'll turn this on auto, high, flip it over to cool, and turn my temperature down. So now my AC's kicked on. Now I always want to leave it in that high position. Um, when it gets really hot out, you um, what happens is if we put it on low, which will quiet it up, it will start to, it's, it doesn't move as quick. So what happens is the, the AC can end up freezing up, the coils freeze up, and they'll ice over. And then when it thaws, we're gonna have water in the middle of the in, in the middle of the coach. It's okay to run it for short periods of time when you're in here, uh, maybe to quiet down while you're talking or something. But if you're gonna be gone or in here or outside for extended periods of time, it's best to run it on high, full on, as as long as you can. Now, if you wanted to use just the fan option, which is over here, you just flip the fan and then on. You can run that on low all you want. Um, that that's not gonna run the compressor. Um, so it's just the fan moving air through here um, if it's not that hot out where you need the air conditioner. The heat runs the same way. You want to leave it on auto high. It kind of does its own thing so the high and low doesn't matter but you want it on high. Flip it over to heat, crank it up, um, make sure your LP tanks are on and it'll light. So for now we'll leave it on cool, back down, let it go through its cycle. Um, if you if you for some reason did that, just like I did and moved them back and forth too many times, there is going to be a delay before it fires back up. Sometimes you have to shut it off, let it run about maybe two minutes, and then put it back on. Um, last thing's the bedroom. The thing I wanted to show you in here is there is washer and dryer hookup that we can install. Um, if you bring in, you can uh, install a combo or a stackable washer and dryer in this model. If not, it's just a nice big closet for you. Um, other than that, there's nothing in there you'll have to mess with. Got under bed storage, of course. Um, this is where a lot of your cranks and um, stabilizing jacks uh, cranks will be. Outlets on both sides. Emergency exit at the back. Um, those are fairly simple to operate. And then you have a couple USB chargers right here. Um, let's see. Um, up here you have a TV backer. So if you did want to put a TV up here or wanted us to install one, we will uh, we'll use the backer that they put back here hook up to your coax. This one does have a king jack antenna. Up here it's fairly simple. There's no raising or lowering. All it does is just turn. So if you want to push it on this button, find out which way it turns. There we go. Um, you know, the only thing you really need to know about this is it has an arrow on it. And when you travel, you want that arrow to face the rear of the coach, um, which means the front of the antenna is facing forward. It's kind of backwards. Um, that's the way King Jack does it. These are great antennas. They pick up, I think, farther than 50 mile radius, so they're really good. Uh, what else do we have in here? Huh? I think that's about it for this coach. Um, let's see, we already did your awning. Um, it's got the Moride steps. So that's the last thing I'll show you. These are very simple. Always want to open your door all the way when you're open or closed in. Flip it up. They got a latch right here that automatically latches. You can go ahead and close your door. So, this was the orientation video on the Puma 32RKTS. I'm Greg with Walnut Ridge RV. Thanks for watching.